Hi everyone, I'm Jim from LubeCore, Minnesota. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, we just finished the install on an 85G. The reason that we're seeing more mini equipment, when I was a kid and doing construction work, they gave me a shovel and a pick. We're finding that a lot of our customers are saying finding labor to do the manual labor that people used to do is now being replaced by machines. So we are seeing more and more interest for auto lubrication to keep this piece of equipment working. So today we just want to walk through you real quick what we did, give you an indication of how we're doing it, and you can decide if you think something like this might be helpful to you and your fleet. So if you want to walk around here, let's take a quick look and show you what we're doing. One of the challenges with mini equipment is space. Obviously you can see the machine is very compact. Um, there's a position for the operator, but not a lot of other real estate. So it re does require some creativity in where we mount the pump. And if you can see up here, we put it up here so the operator can clearly look out his window and see the grease level. The actual maintenance of the auto lube system is probably going to be done by a mechanic. So what we wanted to do was make it accessible. So for a mechanic to get up here and to check the pressure gauges, to fill the pump, to change any program parameters, he does have access from up in this area. Again, from the operator position, the key things that we want operators to watch is do the physical walk around of the machine every day. What we want to see is an inspection of each of the unions and seeing evidence of fresh grease. I mean, if you look over here, we have the pump running. You can see we're starting to see fresh grease pushed through there. So as you're instructing your operators, they need to know when you have an auto loop system, is do the physical inspection. That can't end. You need to confirm. The best way to confirm is seeing evidence of fresh grease. Obviously from the operator's position, because this reservoir stays clear through its life and has a top follower plate, it's very easy to see indications that the grease is going down daily. If there would be an issue, a mechanic can clearly get up here, he can run test cycles and there is pressure gauges in the system, he would be able to see that the pressure comes up and as the cycle goes through, the pressure dissipates. You should see then again evidence of fresh grease at all the unions. So we're going to jump up and we'll show you kind of how we're partitioning the grease. You may notice in this pump, I don't know, Jason, if you can see in there, we're running a dual pistons. And the reason we do that is because certain points need more grease than others. And our ability to control grease flow is increased if we have two options of how we partition the grease. So what pump when it kicks on, it spins and strikes a piston, and that piston generates a known displacement per minute of runtime, and they range from two to four to six cc's. Again, that gives us better control of how much grease we're sending to which parts of the machine. The rear of the machine divider resides here and is feeding all the points on the boom and on the steer assembly, uh, the boom control assembly. So that one's located here. The other one follows the main line over the top of the boom, and those dividers are positioned towards the front of the machine, closer to where the action of where they're being greased is. So when we're mounting dividers, we want to make them accessible. You'll notice we put it in line of sight from the operator position. So as the operator is sitting in that seat, if he would happen to snag a line or something like that, he's got a clear visual of the divider assembly and can see problems. From there, we're following the lines down and partitioning grease. Different points need different requirements. All that metering is done through the divider. What these dividers do is it takes pressure in and it's a series of shuttle valves that spool back and forth. What's driving the mechanics of the divider is the pressure incoming and how we're controlling flow is a function of how many outputs per point. So again, this is a little mathematical, but once it's set up, the system will keep repeating and doing the same thing we tell it to do over and over. So the menial task of greasing machine daily is now done with the machine. Key things again to check over as an operator, make sure you're seeing visible evidence of fresh grease. Obviously you notice we do use the heaviest duty components we can. This would be the same type of system we would use on a full size excavator. Uh, an example would be a 350 or again with the John Deere line, a 210. Again, same system, just a little more compact and we have to design our layout and our configuration to take into account that we don't have as much real estate to work with but we still need to get to the terminal point. And you can see, obviously, that's what we've done here. If you do have questions about automatic greasing, uh, we'd be delighted to speak with you. Again, today we did have a small open house and we will occasionally do these. 
We will post it on social media and you're always welcome to come and see what we do. Ask questions about the technology, inspect our install and see for yourself, is this helpful to you? Again, any questions, feel free to call me or my team. We're delighted to take your call and uh, happy to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.